to another Heart Snuggles. We're so happy you're here today. And I'd love to introduce you to our new guest. Please introduce yourself. Hey everyone, I'm Brittany Taylor. I live in Providence, Rhode Island. I do a lot of things. I'm mostly a photographer. I've been a photographer for 12 years. I'm also a Bikram yoga instructor. I also read tarot cards. And I'm also an embodiment coach. And to me, that is throughout my years of being a photographer, reading tarot cards, and now teaching yoga, I see that people have a hard time connecting their mind, bodies, and spirits. So my whole thing is, let's try to get all that on the same page. I think it's actually possible. So that's what (laughs) I'm about to do. That's amazing. And how did you get started with your business? Photography was actually an accident. So I went to college and I got my degree in film studies and I wanted to be a sports documentary editor because they would always make me cry when I watched them. I was like, I want to make people cry. So that's what I want to do. Before that, actually, I was going to go to college to be a forensic psychologist because I want to talk to criminals. That was a whole other thing. Um, I've had that. that didn't <laughs> I guess we all have that moment, like, let's talk to criminals. I don't know, but that passed. So, yay. Um, Got my degree in film studies. And like a lot of people do, you end up working at the mall after you graduate. So I was working for Sony when Sony used to have stores. And I was there when they launched their first DSLR camera. So it's been a minute since that happened. I had to learn how to use the camera to sell the camera. And that's how I learned how to take pictures. Looking back at my life, I guess I was always meant to be a photographer. My mother went to the Rhode Island School of Design for fashion. So I was there as a little baby at her fashion shows and there was always like photo shoots happening. And apparently there are photos of me as a three-year-old holding a cassette tape up to my face because I thought it was a camera. So, and I had a point and shoe and like my friends always asked me to take their pictures. I guess it was always there. I just never realized like, oh, that could be a career for me. So to kind of shorten this story, I ended up working for another store. They laid me off. Someone said, hey, you take good pictures. You should be a photographer. And I said, that's ridiculous. Who would ever want to do that? And that was 12 years ago. So I did my first photo shoot, kept going, realized I didn't suck at it been going ever since that's great i i it's a fun i've seen that it's a common pattern like we often don't realize what our gifts are and like it's just normal (laughs) yeah totally um maybe that's like really it's hard to recognize that the stuff that you're naturally good at could be a thing that you can do yeah because it just feels just like nah that's not my job (laughs) i'm good at that (laughs) Exactly. Like everything, we should struggle. We should struggle to like find our career and what we want to do. Why do the thing that we actually just are naturally good at? Yeah. Why bother? Really doing. We're like, no, this is fun for me. I shouldn't, that can't be work. Exactly. I was super resistant to it at first. I'm like, I didn't, this is like easy for me and I love doing it. Why would I get paid to do that? But it's like, why wouldn't I get paid to do that? Exactly. The way capitalism is set up, it's so wild. I know it's so wild. I'd love for you to talk about your core values of your business too, um, because I think they're so beautiful. Yeah, I realized over the years of taking pictures, and I mostly take pictures of women, female identifying people, and the things I hear people say to themselves are wild. And like the whole thing that we all have heard, would you say this to your best friend? Would you let your best friend say this to themselves? No. Why on earth would you say it to yourself? That gets thrown out the window when it comes to ourselves. Just, I've heard the worst things imaginable. And I got to a point of like, I'm kind of over this now because we're literally, we're being abusive to ourselves. And like, that's not okay. We would not accept this behavior from anyone else, but we do it to ourselves. No problem on a daily, does not matter. So 
And also, since this is audio, you can't see me. I'm a plus size woman. I'm a black woman. I'm a Native American woman. There's a lot of queer women. There's a lot of stuff you would say that's probably stacked against me. And I realized like, this is not, this is not how I want to live life. Just being sad and miserable. And why, why do we do this to ourselves? So I decided personally that I'm done now. I'm done doing that. (laughs) Literally, I remember the moment where I was like, I'm no longer going to be shy. I used to be shy. People who know me now, like that sounds like a lie. But (laughs) yeah, I, I used to be shy. I was very passive, passive aggressive let's be honest. And now I'm just like, let's just say it as it is. Let's just get to the point. And the point is, we really do have one life. Why are we going to waste it on dumb shit? Yes. And it really is. It's dumb shit. The stuff that we say to ourselves, oh, I need to lose weight. I need to earn my food. I need to look a certain way. I need to do all these things. I need to make enough money for X, Y, Z. It's like, oh, this is ridiculous. This is how we're going to waste our time on this earth. Like, i rather not. Like it snaps to all that. <laughs> I agree. It's like, why aren't we just, yeah, it's, it's we're fighting like I feel like we're like swimming upstream when we can just easily just like sit back relax and just enjoy what is and do what feels good and yeah let go of the rest Mm -hmm. I'm a former member of the hustle culture cult (laughs) because it's a cult so let's just keep it 100 (laughs) it's a process it is a process so how have you have you like debunked yourself from that mindset of like do more be this kind of stuff oh it's a day-to-day process and even when I think that I'm over it I realize I'm not over it and again for since it's this audio I actually have a clock behind me that just says work (laughs) all around it for every hour just says work (laughs) and it's from a company called uh, no fun which is (laughs) even more ironic. And I noticed that I, the way I found worthiness and value in myself was with how productive could I be? And like, that was my toxic behavior. So here I am, like everyone else, like I need to look a certain way or I need to do this or that to my body. My toxic behavior was I must work all the time. And it took, um, it took me stop watching Gary Vaynerchuk videos. It, it took me not reading the business and personal development books anymore. I actually took a year off of any type of development content because I actually did not, like the clock said, I did not know how to have fun. And I love YouTube. So I'm like, yeah, I'm just watching YouTube videos. Like, no, if it's all about business and productivity and mindset and all this stuff. And I actually before wanted to be a mindset coach. And it's like, this is a lot. And I don't know how to just relax. And I'm getting resentful towards other people in my life because they get to relax. Yet somehow I don't get to relax. It's a great realization that you're just like, wait. <laughs> Yes. When my boyfriend is like begging me like to like, can you just sit? Can you stop? He bought me a switch last year. Um, so I could play Animal Crossing, not on his switch. <laughs> oh my gosh. That used to be my favorite game. You know, it used to be my favorite game too, until I was like, I need to have the most perfect island. And then it took over my life. So it took over his switch. And then thankfully Animal Crossing was like, you can switch your island over to a different one. He was like, let's get this girl switch. I got my own. I was like obsessed over it. It had to be the most beautiful island. I needed to keep it a five-star island. It needed to be like, I want the YouTubers to come take tours on my island. I was like, I'm getting obsessive over it. I don't know how to have fun and just chill. 
so I haven't been on my island a little bit lately because I go on every once in a while just to make sure that Sherb hasn't left my island, which was yesterday. <laughs> and then I'll go back on next week just to make sure Sherb hasn't left. But yeah, it's like, it's a process. It truly is a process. And that's when I have to remember to give myself some grace. It's going to be a process that I will fall back into the, I must do everything great. I must be productive. I must put my whole mind, body, my throw my whole ass into it. Like, that's just how I feel about things. Like, I can't just, this is fun. It's a process. Yes. And what does grace look like to you or feel like to you? Grace is taking a step back, acknowledging when I may have gone too far. And whatever that was, that process was, or whatever the situation was, like maybe I expected too much of myself that I couldn't handle. I'm not a failure that I couldn't handle the buttload of tasks and responsibilities I've thrown on myself. Failure is not death. Failure is not a bad thing. It's just really, it's just a, it's just like a little notification from the universe of like, maybe that wasn't the right choice for you. Yeah, it's it's not a slight against me as a person. So Grace is just like, okay, we had a bit of a moment there. <laughs> Did it end up the way that we thought? That's okay. We'll be fine. No one died, hopefully. So everything's fine. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, a little self-soothing. The nice voice, it's somewhere in your head that's like actually comforting. It's like making, you're listening to that one. <laughs> Oh, I am a type one Enneagram, which is the perfectionist. Mm -hmm. And we all have our inner critic, but like type one actually comes with an inner critic. Mm -hmm. And my inner critic is like, "Mm, you could have done better on that one. Like you're supposed to be great at all things because somewhere along the way, I thought that was what I was supposed to be or do. Um, So yeah. I don't know how many times I can say this is a process, but it really is every day of it's okay that you did not have the picture perfect YouTuber morning routine that you were doing really good on taking your vitamins for two weeks and then you forgot for the next two weeks. Me always, me and routines, I'm like, yeah, it's just, it's like, yeah, it feels good. And then I so quickly get off track, so it's just normal. We're all human. And it doesn't even feel good. Honestly, sometimes when you're too routine, it's like, wait, you know, then, then I'm like pushing, you know? So yeah, it's that balance (laughs) and just like rechecking. I think it's a constant check-in of like, what feels good today? How can I give myself more grace? Mm -hmm. I even had a blog, another blog on top of my other blog. (laughs) Again, too many things called my blog was called work life unbalanced because balance is a lie. Um, and we're all trying to attain something that's not real. And I think balance to me is really just know when you're not pushing yourself and to have self-awareness. I think self-awareness is gone nowadays. I don't know why people have such a hard time just acknowledging how they are at the moment. Yeah, that's such a valid point. People are it's, always in denial. It's like, I can clearly see like all your body language is saying this, but you're telling me that. I'm like, mm. <laughs> yeah. And it starts to make you feel like when you do have that self-awareness of like, what am I off? Am I bad am I what's wrong with me that I see it in me and in you but oh no dare I say something about it then I'm the problem it's like but you okay sure sure okay (laughs) I agree and how do you help people like stop putting or yourself stop putting effort into things that don't matter we need to have a check-in, like a true check-in day, maybe once 
at least once a quarter. I know everyone tries to do this at the end of the year so you can start the next year with less bullshit. But honestly, once a month, like truly have a sit down of like reflecting the all that stuff that I thought about, all the time I spent on whatever, was it actually worth it in the end? Am I investing my time and energy and thoughts into people that truly matter? Or I think, yeah, I read something the other day, which was really good. And it's in the book, We Should All Be Millionaires. And a big thing about us is we do so much for other people as much as we're so selfish. Like our actions are really just based on what other people around us. Oh yeah. And the book was saying like to do a friend audit. And as some people might feel like, oh, that's like, but honestly, truly, like what are people doing for you? Mm. I preach this all the time. I love this. It's so important. It's like, honestly, what are people doing? Because it's what they're doing for you is like, in turn, what you're doing for them. I realized a lot of my relationships were transactional. And like, I could always supply something. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, I could always supply something, but what was I getting in return? Like, I have no problem pouring it all into you if I feel like I'm getting that back Mm -hmm. because I want us to all do this together. But if I'm depleting myself for you, I have nothing left for me. And that's such a big thing, especially after the past year of feeling very lonely and isolated. We're probably going to go overboard now and doing the most for other people. Mm-hmm. We need to think about like, where is this energy going? That's probably the first thing that people can do to see if it's all worth it. And sometimes you're probably going to realize it wasn't, that it wasn't worth it. And that's when the grace comes back in. It's okay. This is how we learn. The way this world is set up is for us to just do the most for somebody else and not think about ourselves. That like nasty feeling of guilt and obligation of like when someone is, you know, needing help or something you just like especially as a woman but I mean we all feel Mm -hmm. to some extent that like we it's our responsibility to help and heal and be there for them and Mm -hmm. yeah and then all of a sudden we're left like on empty and we're like how did I get here (laughs) and you get resentful Uh, another book that I think is fantastic read is the four tendencies by Gretchen Rubin it's also a quiz you can take you don't have to read the book but I highly suggest reading the book it's a quick read And the four tendencies are how we meet expectations. And the tendencies are upholder, which means you meet inner and outer expectations, obliger, which is me. I meet outer expectations, but not inner expectations. The opposite of that is questioner. They meet inner expectations and not outer expectations. And the rebel, they meet no expectations, not not even their own. And I'm an obliger. So I, on top of being a perfectionist with the Enneagram, so I'm like, I must do for you and I'm going to do it well. And that's a bad combination because then I, it's actually a Venn diagram. So I'm a obliger slash rebel. So then I hit rebellion and I'm like, I hate you all. (laughs) Never talk to me again. Just don't forget I exist. And then a week later, I'm like, all right, so what can I do for you? (laughs) It goes back. So knowing that about myself and also my love language being acts of service, it's like, I have to be hyper self-aware of like when I'm going down that route of I'm doing the most for everyone else and not for me. And it's tough as a small business owner because then it shows up as working late, cutting your prices. It it shows up in bad ways because you want to be able to help as many people as you can. And yeah, it's tough and it, it, it trains you. You're left with nothing. Yeah. And it's like, what, 
it's so funny that you look, you know, at small business owner, like you look at the end of the day and you're like, why am I not putting myself or my work first? And why am I over here? Like, yeah, I took care of all my people, but <laughs> I just keep self abandoning myself. It's such a toxic cycle. Yeah. And I think that's a big part of what we don't talk about when small businesses um, close. We always talk about the financial aspect, which of course is huge, but maybe we should also talk about maybe it's, there was no energy left to make the money, <laughs> to do the things to make the money. It's just all based on money. And I think money's great. We do need it. Yeah. Capitalism sucks, but I mean, we're here. Yeah. This rent needs to be paid. Yeah. yeah. I have two bougie dogs. They need to be eating their $90 food. <laughs> Do they need $90 food? They don't, but that's what they eat. So this is where we are. <laughs> we have to make the money. So we have to do what's right for ourselves. And it goes back to like, again, it's everything for me is like self-awareness and then giving you some yourself some grace because you will see some stuff <laughs> that you did not like mm-hmm. when you had your little self-awareness check. Yeah. And do you incorporate tarot into your process? I do. Um, I'm one of those people, again, for others and not for me. It's like, oh, I'll read other people's cards, but like, hey, you can read your own cards too, you know. What I do though is I'll have other people read my cards. I just went that. I was like, you know, this is for (laughs) what I do is for them. I will find someone else to do it for me, which is good. Outsourcing, Mm -hmm. even on that stuff, even if you can do it for yourself, maybe someone else should do it for you. It's nice to receive too. It's like, Mm -hmm. yes, do it for me. I don't want to do anything. You know, that's great. Yeah. um, Tarot is great. Um, I, I love it and I'm glad that it's spreading out to people who are outside of, let's say, the spiritual witchy realm um, and people understanding that it's just another source of reflection, get your brain thinking different ways. For me, every reading says the exact same thing so that says something like no matter who's reading it what decks they're using same message every time also same thing akashic records psychic uh, it always says the same stuff so um off topic but not really if you're always getting the same messages acknowledge them no need to ignore this is a quick moment of giving myself some grace because it's like okay if you're getting the same messages over and over what are you doing with them Mm -hmm. why are we ignoring them i talk about i think about this all the time i mean like i'm like okay give me some answers universe give me some answers give me some signs and i get all the signs and i'm like no 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 no. give me some real signs and it's like we we ask and then we receive and then it's like we don't want to see or acknowledge or like accept that and so then we just like keep (laughs) yeah um so for those who don't know there's this website called holisticism and the the founder michelle did an akashic records reading for me once and this is around a time uh last year where i was doing a lot of readings a lot of like trying to figure out some answers and she was like they sound annoyed with you And like, why do you keep asking this? And I was like, okay, got it. (laughs) Got it. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, yeah, because I guess I was looking for a different answer and I don't know why. Um, I think a whole other problem that people have in general is we think people have a fear of failure, but really it's a fear of success. And I think I was having one of those moments last year and my guides and my, whoever's looking out for me was kind of over it at that moment. And I was like, I get it. I'm over it too. So let's, okay. (laughs) 
That's so great. That's so funny. Mm. Yeah, so more grace sounds good and more acceptance. That's it. Those mm -hmm. are beautiful things. We should all try to incorporate a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, life's, life is, I say this all the time, life is too short and life is too long. <laughs> like, why are we doing this to ourselves? Like, why do we play ourselves constantly? Like, what are we getting out of this? What, nothing. It's not even like a momentary, like good feeling. Like we just will feel crap. Now we'll feel crap later. So like, what's the point? Why are we doing this? I love it. Keep it simple. It really is that <laughs> simple. Yeah. Again, right back to the beginning of conversation. Why can't we just do the easy thing? We can. Yeah. It's, it's totally an option. Like I promise you that option's available to you. <laughs> So good. And so if people want to find you or first tell them all your services that you're offering right now and then how they can find you. Yeah. So I'm based in Providence, Rhode Island. So if you are in New England or New York, I do travel. Hey, if you want to fly me out, I'll come out. I do branding photography, lifestyle, boudoir, fashion. Basically people being people is my thing for photography. I do virtual tarot readings. I also have a new service called be ciphered. They shout out to my boyfriend for naming it. I, as I mentioned, probably before you probably realize I love a personality test. I'm the type of person like I would like to see your entire birth chart when we first meet. But what does it all mean together? So we take all these tests and like, okay, that's great. We know this about ourselves. How does it work together? So this new service is you give me all the results for all the things. If it means something to you, I wanna see it and I'll do the research and I'll deliver a PDF and we'll have a Zoom call and we'll talk about how it all actually makes sense for you. So that I'm super excited about because what I realized like, okay, I'm an obliger, that's one test. I would type on Enneagram, that's another test. Love languages, that's another test. But those three things like work together and made me realize, oh, that is a big pain point in my life. But I probably would not have put that together beforehand. So that's what I want to do with this new service. I've also been dabbling in virtual photo shoots, which has been interesting. Actually, mostly virtual boudoir shoots. That's been fun. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, I, after last year, people were trying to figure out, especially the photographers like, um, so what do we do? <laughs> and we've been trying different uh, ways of doing virtual shoots. And it's actually like you set up your phone. I set up my phone on like a cute background and I'm literally with my camera taking pictures of my phone. <laughs> and it's been cool. It's like it's a, a different look. People have been really liking those. So I've been, so not a big part of my business, but if someone wants one, I will absolutely do what I'm doing one this Sunday. And it's super cool. And I get to work with people that I would never be able to work with because they live across the country. So it's been cool. And I teach yoga at Rhode Island Hot Yoga. And we actually do virtual classes as well. So if you can't make it into my actual class, you can take the class at the exact same time wherever you live in your home. So cool. And what's your website or any social medias that you use? My website is brittanytaylor.com. So I have to spell Brittany, B-R-I-T-T-A-N-N-Y. So there's two N's. Could thank my mom for that one. Every One extra letter confuses everyone. So it's fine. So website's brittanytaylor.com. Instagram is at Brittany, just Brittany. I knew Instagram was coming. So I signed up for Instagram the day it launched. So I have just my first name. And my photography Instagram is Brittany.Taylor. Amazing. Thank you so much. This is such a good conversation. And yeah, I hope people can go and use your services virtually or in person. Yeah. Thank you so much for having, having me. This is great.